The lack of diversity on the Formula 1 grid is pretty obvious to see. Three of 20 drivers are Asian, one is Caribbean, one is Mexican, and the rest are of white European descent. The ethnic diversity of the grid is poor, but what is more shocking is that zero of the 20 drivers on the grid are female. It is beyond belief that of the 20 best drivers in the world, none of them are female. That just can't be correct. So what is stopping them from getting into the sport? What are we doing to make it more accessible for them? And what does the wider F1 community think of female drivers? Improving diversity in Formula 1 has been an ongoing struggle for many years now. This isn't a new thing. A quick Google search of diversity in Formula 1 will throw up a plethora of press statements from the sport talking about what they're doing to improve diversity on the grid. Clearly though, nothing is working so far. Unfortunately, it isn't quite as simple as releasing nicely worded press statements and encouraging teams to hire female drivers. If you ask any driver on the grid about how they got into Formula 1, the story will start with a third or fourth or fifth birthday, where their mum or dad bought them their first car to drive around the garden. Then, they'll tell you how they were supported throughout their career to keep going forward. That could be via sponsors, such as in the case of Sergio Perez and Escuderia Telmex, or via their hard-working parents in Lewis Hamilton's case. Or they just lucked out and had Lawrence Stroll as their dad. Either way, there will be a history of physical and fiscal support that got them to the sport. Many drivers are now in their mid-twenties or thirties. They grew up in the nineties and at the turn of the millennium, a period of time when sexual equality in sport wasn't making the news and female professional sport was extremely limited and poorly advertised. Even if there was equality and opportunity for girls and boys in the 90s and noughties, to begin karting in their formative year, there wasn't equity. They didn't have a society around them that was saying, go for it, you can get there as well. That is something that is now changing though. There is a societal shift towards inclusivity rather than pigeonholing people based on their sex, race, class or any other facet of them. That doesn't mean that women have never made it to the pinnacle of motorsport though. In 1958, Maria Teresa de Filippis was the first woman to compete in a Formula 1 weekend. She entered five races over two years and managed to qualify for the starting grid in three of them. It would be 15 years though before another woman, Lella Lombardi, would have the chance to race in a Grand Prix. In a three-year period, she entered 15 races and qualified for 12 of them as well as becoming the only woman to ever score points in Formula 1, thanks to a 6th place finish at the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix. Since then though, only 3 other women have even attempted to qualify for an F1 race. None of them made it to the start grid though. Since Giovanna Amati failed to qualify for the starting grid 3 times in 1992, no woman has participated in a Formula 1 race. So, are we any closer now than we were in the early 90s to seeing a female driver competing in a Formula 1 race? If you consider that the normal route to Formula 1 is through Formula 4, 3 and then 2, the answer would be no. There isn't a single female driver in any of those categories either. But there is more to it than just that. There is a growing drive among current and former Formula 1 drivers to get women back onto the grid. The outspoken encouragement and activism of current drivers and the Formula 1 media can be a step in the path that will lead to women driving in Formula 1 again. Lewis Hamilton, for example, has always been a leading activist on the grid for inclusivity. You will have heard all his stories of racist abuse on racing tracks throughout his career. Of the current crop of drivers, he walked the most challenging career path, and so, more than anyone else, he can empathize with the difficulties women face when trying to make it to Formula 1. Hamilton visited the W Series paddock at the Hungarian Grand Prix to speak with the drivers and key championship personnel. The all-female championship launched in 2019 and aims to give a platform for female drivers to impress and progress to top-level championships. I've been following the W Series over the last few years and I've been trying to get down there because I wanted to meet the young, inspirational women there, Hamilton explained. I've been watching their races in between sessions. Even today I watched the race, so I really wanted to go down there. It's great to see that we have the W Series, but we as a sport, we need to do way more for young girls getting into the sport. For these women, there's no progression from W Series. It's been three years now. Jamie Chadwick, who's won both titles so far and looks the odds-on favorite to claim the third, despite her seven-race winning streak finally coming to an end at the Hungaro ring, 
hasn't been able to move up to fellow F1 feeder series like FIA F3 and Formula 2. She's claimed $1 million in prize money from her brace of titles and earned 15 F1 super license points with her 2021 title success. Despite her incredible success and being a Williams Jr. driver, there doesn't seem to be a clear path for her to continue her career. When you win that W Series, says Hamilton, do you progress into GP2, that's F2, or get a seat in GP2 or whatever it may be? We can definitely do a lot more to support those girls. One of Hamilton's former teammates is also joining the campaign to break down the barriers of entry. Former Mercedes driver Nico Rosberg, the only person to ever beat Lewis Hamilton in the same machinery, runs the Rosberg X Racing Extreme E Racing team. The Extreme E series mandates that each team have a female and male driver. The 2016 world champion has been extremely impressed with his current female driver, Michaela Arlen Kotelinski, whom he describes as, in my eyes, the best female racer in the world at the moment. After the 29-year-old unceremoniously swept away nine-time rally world champion Sebastian Loeb at the Extreme E event in Sardinia. Now, Nico is keen to see more chances for women in Formula 1. We must finally release the brakes on equality so female drivers can make it to the top class, Rosberg told the media. We have to promote women more in motorsport, just like we do in Extreme E, and we have to do it all the way up to Formula 1. For this, we need financial but also idealistic support, something that we highlighted earlier in the video. From associations, clubs, racing series, sponsors, manufacturers and fans, so female racers are supported from an early age and manage to attract the attention of finances and the media. But above all, so they believe in themselves and don't have to fight the battle alone. Parents of teenage girls need to know it's worth investing in their child because the path to the top is clear. That is really where the problem lies for women trying to become Formula 1 drivers. The support isn't there from the very beginning. It is great that a team like Williams wants to sign up a junior driver like Jamie Chadwick when she's in her early 20s. But what about before then? When a young girl turns up to the local track for a karting race, is she given the same encouragement and do potential teams and sponsors view her the same way? And do her parents, who will have to spend millions of dollars to get her to the sport, see how she can get there? David Coulthard is one former driver who's trying to address that. His more than equal initiative aims to find young girls around the age of 10 and support them through their career, specifically focusing on a lack of equity in motor racing. It's not about making them ours because the vision that we have isn't about providing all of the funding, the former F1 driver said when explaining the mission of his initiative. The vision is to have them good enough that your Alpines and your Ferrari academies and all the existing academies will want to pick them up, not as a token gesture because they're good enough. It is this kind of support that will help women make it to Formula 1 not for the sake of tokenism, but because they can compete with the best racing drivers in the world. Coulthard is focusing on the grassroots of motorsport, which is where this kind of societal mentality switching needs to occur. On the other side of the coin though, there are still people in Formula 1 at the moment who are disseminating negative stereotypes of women that are indicative of a deeper cultural problem. Back in 2014, when Susie Wolfe drove in free practice one for the Williams team, she became the first woman to drive at an F1 weekend for 22 years. Sergio Perez was interviewed that weekend and asked about his opinion on women racing in Formula 1. He answered, Yes, Susie, a great driver and showing that women can also be in this difficult world. A nice supportive comment, no problem there. He was then asked if he'd want a woman as a teammate though. No, no. Imagine if a woman beats you, that would be bad. Would be better to have her in the kitchen. Sergio did later apologize and it may have been meant as a joke, but that doesn't mean it isn't sexist and telling of the effects of a lifetime spent in a male-dominated sport. Formula 1 and motorsport as a whole is moving towards a situation where anyone, regardless of their color, class or sex can join the sport. But this movement only started gaining traction in the last 10 years. There will be young girls around the world still five or six or seven years old, who love racing their cars at their local track, and it is those girls that should be getting the most support. Competing in elite sports of any kind is a lifelong endeavor, and the fruits of this labor may take 15 or 20 years to mature. When do you think we'll see women return to the Formula 1 grid? And what more do you think we, as a motor racing community, should be doing to support them getting there? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.